Hello, this is Ron Paul with your weekly update for Monday, November 5th. Sadly, but not unexpectedly, the mass shooting at the Temple Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh is being used to justify new infringements on liberty. Of course, opponents of gun rights are claiming this shooting proves America needs more gun control. Even some who normally oppose gun control say the government needs to do more to keep guns out of the hands of the mentally ill. Those making this argument ignore the lack of evidence that background checks, no restrictions on the rights of those alleged to have a mental illness, or any other form of gun control would have prevented the shooter from obtaining a firearm. Others are using the shooter's history of posting anti-Semitic comments on social media to call for increased efforts by both government and social media websites to suppress hate speech. The shooter posted anti-Semitic statements on the social media site called Gab. Gab, unlike Twitter and Facebook, does not block or ban users for offensive comments. After the shooting, Gab was suspended by its Internet service provider and PayPal has closed the site's account. This is an effort to make the social media websites responsible for the content and even the actions of their users, turning the site's operators into thought police. Some social media sites, particularly Facebook and Twitter, are eager to silence not just bigots, but those using their platforms to advocate for liberty. Facebook has recently banned a number of libertarian pages, including CopBlock, a site opposing police misconduct. Twitter has also banned a number of conservative and libertarians, as well as other critics of American foreign policy. Some libertarians say we should not get upset, as these are private companies exercising private property rights. However, these companies are working with government and government-funded entries, such as the Atlantic Council, a group funded by NATO, and the military-industrial complex to determine who should and should not be banned. The effort to silence hate speech is not just about outlawing racist, sexist, or anti-Semitic speech. The real goal is to discredit and even criminalize criticism of the welfare warfare state by redefining those criticisms as hate. It is not just progressives that wish to use laws outlawing hate speech to silence political opponents. Some neoconservatives want to criminalize criticism of Israel for the nonsensical reason that any criticism of Israel is anti-Semitic. Other right-wing authoritarians wish to expand hate crime laws to include crimes committed against police officers. Ironically, neoconservatives and other right-wing authoritarians are among the biggest purveyors of real hate speech. What could possibly be more hateful than speech advocating perpetual war? Cultural Marxists are also guilty of hate speech with their calls for both government and private violence against political opponents and for the use of government force to redistribute property just about the only individuals advocating a political philosophy not based on hate are those libertarians who consistently advance the non-aggression principle. Thanks for calling this update. A new update is placed on this number, 888-322-1414, every Sunday. Thanks for calling.